welcome back to another video. So I have this crusty EJ20. Uh, this was the original block that was in the WRX wagon. It had a burnt valve, probably due to ringland failure. Uh, not totally sure. We'll find out once we break this thing down. Uh, but I'm gonna strip this down. I'll walk you through how I do it. Um, it's pretty easy once you get to this point, especially since we don't have an oil pan or the heads to deal with. Um, but there's some tricky parts to it. Uh, like in the back here, if you can see this panel, you have to use uh, a traditional impact, uh, the type that you smack with a hammer. Um, so that's a little bit tricky. And then removing the wrist pins uh, is a little bit technical, uh, but pretty easy if you've done it before. The purpose of me doing this is I am going to uh, clean up the case halves a bit, really inspect them well, make sure that there's no cracks in uh, the halves anywhere. And if it looks decent, I will send it down to Outfront, Outfront Motorsports and have them uh, at minimum re-deck and hone the block. Um, I'm debating on whether to have them do like a Stroker 2.2. Uh, depends on cost and things of that nature. But yeah, basically what I potentially want to use this for is to build a block with forged internals. Just build something for uh, higher horsepower for this build to kind of take the car to the next level. Um, it's going to be a little while before I can actually afford all of the uh, engine internals, but um, I do want to get started by at least inspecting this thing, see if it's usable, because if it's not, then I want to start shopping around for a different short block that could be used. Yeah, I just want to kind of start the process with out front if we can use this as well. So. Um, anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna start by pulling off the water pump and the oil pump out front, as well as the oil cooler. And just to be fully transparent, I'm pretty hungover today. But, you know, had a good time with friends, so I'd say it was worth it. All right, so this oil cooler is pretty easy to deal with, but it does take a 24 mil socket. And there's this big nut that hooks to this post that you just have to crack loose. So, let's do that. Now I guess this is one of the pieces of uh, this oil cooler that you do not want to reuse if you are rebuilding an engine and it had any sort of catastrophic engine failure. Um, from what I've been told, from what I've learned, uh, apparently pretty much anything that has had oil running through it, you don't want to reuse. Pull the oil pump off. I believe this should have some sealant behind it, but I think this water pump is supposed to also. Oh no, that's just a gasket. Um, yeah, I believe this pump, it's been a while since I took one of these apart, but I seem to remember when I installed a brand new oil pump in the past, had to use Fuji Bond. All right guys, so that was the easy part of this, um, getting these little accessories off. I wanted to point out, I believe that although you don't wanna use this oil cooler again, I think it's a good idea to save this uh, post. I don't, I don't see any reason why you can't reuse these. Um, I don't know how pricey they are. Maybe they're cheap though, so maybe that's silly, but I think this thing too, this this uh, metal hard line, I may also just save. Um, the other thing about this too though is like, you don't need this oil cooler to run these engines. I don't even have one on this engine because this was a JDM EJ205, and that particular 205 doesn't come with this oil cooler from Japan. 
Um, I have heard people say that these, the really the, the purpose of these isn't necessarily just for cooling. It's also to bring your oil up to temp. Um, and so I guess if you live in really cold climates, this thing is kind of beneficial because it'll bring your oil up to temp a lot sooner. The problem though is if you don't run it, you need a different post like this for your um, oil filter. This sticks all the way through like that. And without the cooler, this thing's gonna be sticking out a huge amount. So, like I said, I don't even run one on that car. It probably comes with a different post. Um, I've had zero problems with getting my car up to temp and it's been pretty cold some mornings since I've gotten this running again and I haven't noticed any issues, so. All right, moving on. Um, there are these plugs that we're gonna get out now. This one and this one. And then the other two are in the back that we'll have to use the uh, impact for. All right, these plugs take a 14 size Allen or hex head, I guess, whatever you wanna call it. I'm not sure the impact will have enough torque because this thing is pretty worn out. But I guess I was wrong, it does. This is the impact I was talking about. Let's give it a shot. And it's out. Just like that. These ones are coming out quite easily. This feels like they weren't put in correctly. But I know what we can do to test it. Oh wow, these are just coming right out. Wow. That's not supposed to happen. See, it's supposed to do that. Like those ones aren't. All right, so the reason I put the crank bolt on and then turned the engine over is because if you look in these holes, you can see the wrist pin clips. So you have to usually turn it over uh, and kind of look through the holes and get them to line up so that you can get in there and access those. I'll show you what the other side looks like. So on this side, you can just see the connecting rod in there and it's not lined up with the wrist pin on the front. So we'll pull the back ones out first and then we'll have to spin this again. Then we'll be able to access those clips as well. There's one. Now the wrist pins need to be knocked out, so. Now with the engine flipped over, we can reach down inside here and push the pistons out of the sleeves. 
you don't necessarily need to do that um, to get the case halves apart, but personally, I think that the case halves come apart easier without the pistons and the sleeves. So there's one, they come out pretty easy. There's two. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, and with it still flipped upside down, there's a bolt right here that's easy to miss. Um, that's tucked right there, and that's that holds the case halves together down here. Um, and it's a pretty common oversight to miss that, take everything else off, and then try to get the case halves to come apart, and they just won't go. So don't forget about this one underneath the oil pan. Okay. Sneaky bolts in here. One right there. And I believe that's it on the back. So let's get that one off. The wobbly guy. So now we just have, I believe, all of the standard case bolts. So there's all these on top. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then there's one, two, three, I believe. And then there's some bolts inside. Right down there inside the water jackets, you can see that bolt there and there, there and there. And I believe they're in the same location on the other side. There might be a slight difference on the other side, um, but I believe they're all the same. This side only has two. a couple case bolts here and here that is on the passenger side of the case and they're just kind of tucked and it was really easy to not see them especially because it's so filthy down in this block uh, yeah you can just barely see them they're just covered by grease and dirt Shaft with the connecting rods. Screen shaft 
out actually. It looks like it's in really good shape. There's a little bit of scoring on the front of it here, but uh, it's probably a very usable crankshaft still for someone that's doing an engine rebuild and just wants a stock crank. Definitely need to be machined, but it's probably cheaper than just buying it. All right, there's our case halves. Uh, I'll go through and inspect these really well. And we will see about getting this thing all remachined. All right, guys, so that's it. That is an EJ20 teardown. Um, got our crankshaft there, both the case halves, and all our accessories we pulled off. Look through all these pistons and see if I see any signs of ringland failure. Don't see anything on this one. This one looks okay too so far. About this bad boy. Hmm. Don't see anything there either. This one looks fine too. You know, that makes me think that it was probably a timing issue. Um, and that's why I ended up with that burnt valve. And that's why we had zero compression in cylinder one when I got the car. Um, Cause yeah, these actually look decent. I mean, there's some scoring on the, like some wear on the skirts for sure. Uh, that's pretty common though, especially for an engine that's got well over 200,000 miles. They're so filthy and nasty though. I don't know what that's about. Um, like typically there's a lot of black stuff built up on the, uh, on the tops of the pistons like this, but it's like super thick and crusty. I've never really seen it to that extent, but I'm not like super seasoned at this. I've only tore down like a couple of these before. So it's like my third one, but, uh, yeah. Uh, kind of cool just to check it out and see uh, what might be the cause of the failure. Um, but yeah, definitely that valve leaked and that cylinder had zero compression. How that happened, I'm not sure because we don't have any signs of ringland failure. It's probably because the timing was bad and so you had like maybe a valve that made contact or it was just so hot in cylinder one that it literally burnt the valve and just caused it to melt a hole. So yeah, I don't know. Um, it remains a mystery and we will never know for sure. But the important thing is that we are working on the next phase of this build. But that is all I have for you guys right now. Uh, please hit that like button if you got something out of this and think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and you'd like to see more. And I'm gonna get this block all cleaned up, inspected, get it to Outfront Motorsports and I will keep you guys updated on the progress of all of that. And until next time, peace out, everyone.